of Tom Likas. I am a... We can even call me a disciple, if you wish. I don't always agree with the man, but I'll tell you what I do agree with. The fact that he couldn't be on the air today, and I volunteered as fast as I could to fill in for him, because uh, he was the first guy and the loudest voice to accept me at the radio station before I got there. I mean, there were big arguments at uh, this radio station. I don't know how many radio stations we're on now. I mean, the home station in, in L.A. Huge arguments about hiring me. And uh, Tom Likas, you know, they say uh, um, the foundation of this company or this station or whatever was built on Stern. Yeah, well, the house is Tom Likas. And, and you probably shouldn't fool with it too much. And uh, when, the, when the big man on campus comes to bat for you, you go back to bat for that guy. I'm one of those guys. I'm gonna, I want to know if you are too, by the way. You can feel free to call me on. By the way, since I had my show planned with Nikki Searing, uh, the chick from, I don't even know what she's the chick from. She's the chick that married the guy from 90210 or something. No, she, I, I had questions for her. She's on that, uh, Hulk Hogan wrestling show with me. If you want to see what that's about, go to HulkHogan.com and you can find that. But when I heard that, uh, Tom would not be on the air today, I could not, have answered fast enough to say, hey, let me fill in for him. Not like I'm doing you guys a favor. I realize, like, this is the best there is. We wouldn't be so high rated in so many markets. It's just that I want to show my friend the effort that I would put in. For example, I always think of the effort. Um, Today I woke up, I got in a kind of fight with my girlfriend last night, and she lost. And this is weird, because I have no idea what I'm supposed to talk about for the next four hours, and couldn't care less. I'm a reasonable conversationalist, and you have the phone numbers. It's uh, 1-800-5800-TOM. That's 1-800-5800-TOM. I'm Danny Bonarici, sitting in for my good buddy, Tom Likas, and it's an honor to do so, once again. And if you don't want to spell it out, it's 1-800-5800-866, by the way. Uh, you can Feel free to give me a call on anything, but this morning I just want to tell you, and uh, you can tell me if anybody's ever done this for you or if you've had to do it for anyone else. Got in a fight with the girlfriend last night. Haven't been getting along as well as uh, I think we should, and I mentioned it to her, and I mentioned a couple of, of reasons why, and in my house, we have a thing called effing off, when, you, of course, we use the whole word, but um, when you realize you're wrong. Like, you're, it's, you're dead wrong. Like, you could Google it and prove you're wrong, but you just realize, oh, wait, I'm totally wrong. Of course, George Bush 41 and George Bush 43 are not the first father and son presidents. John Adams and John Adams are your second and fourth presidents collectively, I believe. And I was insisting, let's just make this up, I was insisting, although you'd be an idiot to insist this, that uh, the Bushes were the first family president tag team. Uh, and when you realize you're wrong, you can put up a fight where you go, oh, 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 effing off. Effing off right now. I couldn't F off fast enough. I'm effing off so fast that the car that I'm effing off in is smoking from the tires. Okay? So, uh, she effed off in a very good way. And, uh, I'm gonna take Mike's phone call in just a second, but then I wanna get this, I wanna get this out first. I fell asleep before she had a chance to completely F off. And it's a big deal in my house. I don't, we don't, I don't let a fight end without a resolution. You know, I, I like to box, as some of you know, I'm not particularly good at it, but the thing I like best about boxing is, you know, uh, uh, the Dodgers are in the playoffs and everything's great, but who's winning? Who, 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 what, who wins for the Dodgers? They're not all that positive. Was it a great play by the second baseman one night? In boxing, the guy standing up won. That's it, no question. The guy standing up Beat the guy that's looking at the ceiling. No two questions about it. So, I won the fight fair and square. I killed her. And this morning, I woke up to a cup of hot coffee and porno already playing. That's a serious effing off. That is, and so funny, because, and this is what I was talking about putting in the effort for my buddy Tom, that I would just volunteer as fast as I could to come in and do his show, even though I don't think, uh, you know, our shows are not similar. I think Tom is syndicated in a million uh, cities because he's probably better than I am. I have no ego about that. That's not my deal. My deal is I wanted to put in the effort. I don't like coffee. But she didn't know that. She doesn't, she doesn't, we've only been living together a little while and, uh, she doesn't know I don't like coffee. But it was the effort, man. The coffee was still piping hot. And so was the porn. And I thought, it's like, 
if she got me a tie, because the only time I ever wear a tie means I'm under indictment for something. If you see Danny Bonavici walking around a suit and a tie, he's either going to or leaving a courtroom. That's all there is to it ever. And uh, it's like she got me a tie. And I was thinking, I hate ties. But I find out that she had to climb to the top of Mount Everest to get that tie. Now that tie is my favorite thing in the world because of the effort she put in to wake up this morning to a cup of hot coffee and porno already running, and then the obvious things that followed that. Honey, if you're listening, A, I totally accept your F off. You're good. We're solid as a rock. We're, uh, we're a piece of the rock. Prudential. We are prudential, baby. You didn't, And I guess we did break off a piece of that rock. Now I think about it this morning. So I just want you to know, uh, A, honey, I accept. And B, I'm wondering if anybody ever did that to you. Uh, if, uh, uh, if anybody, or you did it to anybody else, you just said, here's my grand gesture. Here's what I'm going to do for you. Now I'm going to try and take these phone calls. I don't know exactly how Tom's phones work, but I'm going to give it my best shot. This should be Mike in Monrovia. Hello, Mike. Hey, what's up, Danny? How's it going, bro? It's going cool, man. It's going really good, uh, to hear you on the Tom Micah show. Well, thank you. I, I I appreciate that you approve. I didn't really do it because, like, I figure I'm going to get a lot of calls that say, hey, whereas Lycus, you suck. And I will take those because I know why I'm here. I'm not here to try and replace Tom Lycus. I'm not here to try and be as good as Tom Lycus. I am here because Tom Lycus couldn't be. And rather than a replay, I wanted to show him I'd put in the effort because he put in the effort to tell these people, yes, you should hire Danny Bonaducci. And when Lycus speaks, these people listen, and these people gave me a job when I really needed it. Yeah, yeah, and plus, uh, I couldn't think of anybody else to step in, If uh, especially I'm in the car listening to the radio all the time, and uh, I only know you from radio. I never saw the Partridge family or anything, and even the things on TV, uh, I never really paid attention to those because not many people that I know put too much into reality TV. I only know you from radio. Oh, dude, so. you should have seen my first show. My first show, the first episode, I shot Roy. Hey, good, he said Fudge. He's good. Good, you're cool. Yeah, no, I didn't. I took a check for a big chunk of money, and I promised them a show like they had never seen. So when they walked into my gym and I had the needle already in my hand, I thought, well, I got to hide this. And they thought, because they're huge, by the way. They're humongous. And I said... No, man, I played a reality show. I took their money. I cashed their check. I probably spent it on hookers by now. Uh, here we go. They walked in, turned on the light, and I jabbed that bitch in my arm. And I had done it so dramatically that it hurt more than usual, and I let go of it. And I must have done a 15-second monologue with just a huge needle sticking out of my shoulder. So on my reality show, the first one, the second ones and the third ones, you're right. They're getting more scripted and more scripted. But this was... Uh, breaking Bonaduce, although I'm not proud of it because I stayed drunk and wasted and violent and I hit a guy and we got sued and it was a drag, but it was the realest show on TV. Well, I'm going to have to look into that, definitely. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I've never seen it because I'm too embarrassed by my behavior, but thank you very much for uh, calling. How do I hang up? Just hit it again or? Uh, All right, see you later, Denny. Okay, yeah, hit drop, which would be right here. Got it. Thanks, man. I appreciate your call. Uh, I'm going to take them as they come. Let's go to Kyle. What's up, Kyle? Hey, how you doing, Danny? I'm doing very well, thank you. Hey, nothing but respect for you, pal, but I had a question. Yeah. Why are you hosting like this when you're breaking the cardinal rule and having a girlfriend, man? You're rich, you're successful, and you got a girlfriend. That's just kind of a down note, isn't it? No, not at all. This is a, a bit of where Tom and I disagree, and I think possibly it might have to do with the fact that, that I was just talking about uh, steroids, which are testosterone. I carry around the test of the Green Bay Packers runs through my system. <laughs> if I don't have sex several times a day, parts of me start to swell. And I don't mean just the good parts. I mean, my head hurts and, you know, I'm, I'm literally, I've got the test of about five 17-year-old boys. You know, it's like I'm right at my peak at 49 years old and I'm, uh, you know, I have 16-inch arms. I'm, I'm ridiculous on this stuff. So to not have a girlfriend for me would mean so much money in bars and so much wasted time and so much not prepping my show because there's no way I could go a whole day without sex without blowing my brains out. So what you really want to know is my moral standing, and I will not say this about my current girlfriend because i got to go home to her, but I was married for 18 years, cheated all the way through it. So I not only got laid, I had a wife, I had a cook, 
I had a kept person to get the chauffeur, the chauffeur of the kids to school to help me out. A wonderful woman, by the way. Just, the fact that I'm scum has nothing to do with the fact that Gretchen was a wonderful girl. But I'm just not faithful. So the cardinal rule for Tom is don't have a girlfriend. Cardinal rule for me is have steady sex that you cheat on. There, there is go. nothing more exciting, my friend, than to have sex with a woman and then go home to your... Let's go with girlfriend on this one, because I don't want to be rude to my ex-wife. She's a nice lady. But there's nothing more... You think you need, like, an hour or two to recover, because you've probably had sex with your mistress so three or four times, or it wasn't... Well, maybe two or three times, or it wasn't worth the effort. But you find out how fast you can recover when you go home and you've just had sex with one girl, and the woman you live with is waiting there. Wow. And if you want to get even worse and more horrifying... There's something very exciting about not showering between. Oh, man. It's mean. It's mean. <laughs> but, dude, I am telling you, you will read statistically that women whose husbands are having affairs are getting more sex than they were before. It's one of the telltale signs. Joining a gym, changing the way you dress, changing your eating habits, because this other girl might be all into Moroccan food and stuff. All of a sudden, you're into Moroccan food. That's one of the telltale signs that your husband's having an affair is all of a sudden you're actually getting more sex and in new positions. All of a sudden, <laughs> you've been doing... Eight years, so she lays on her back like she's painting the Sistine Chapel, and all of a sudden going, hey, can, do you mind just wrapping your right leg behind your head? All of a sudden she's going, what are you talking about? Nothing. I read it in a book. Uh, uh, yeah, it's the Karma Sutra or whatever it is. So uh, Tom and I disagree on, with, on that, but I, if Tom can go out and get sex every single day, then there's no reason to have a girlfriend. I can't. What I do is I usually have a steady girlfriend who I constantly cheat on. <laughs> Well, it was good talking with you, Danny. You're a great guy. Man. Absolute it's pleasure, man. Show. Thank you very Thanks. much. I appreciate it. Let's keep on. Uh, oh, we got to take a break. All right. We're going to take a uh, quick break here. I don't know what time the uh, breaks are or how the show runs exactly, so it might be a little bit bumpy, so fasten your seatbelts. But uh, feel free to give me a call. Danny Bonucci filling in for my good buddy, Tom Likas, uh, at 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-862. The Tom Likas Show. Girls, we are back. Danny Bonavici in for Tom Likas. It's just called having your boys back. That's all there is to it. If you're wondering what the hell I'm doing here, I'm here for one day. Likas will be back here tomorrow. And uh, I just wanted to show my uh, respect for the man by coming in. And even if my show is not as good as a Likas replay, I got to tell you, I, I hope to entertain you. But mostly this is to show my buddy Likas that I got his back as much as he had mine. Uh, let us just keep cruising the phones there. Let's go as the order they came in. Although this one makes me nervous. Kyle. Hey, Danny. Kyle in Portland. Hey, I'm glad you're you're on. This weekend I saw the Hulk Hogan uh, Celebrity Fight Club uh, commercial. Yeah. I saw you trying to take on Dustin Time, and could you tell me about that? Well, here's the thing. We don't actually fight. The show is, we show you, there's an actual scripted wrestling match. There's several, dozens upon dozens. And we show you that we are learning them, and exactly how they begin, the middle, and the end. Some of them were 300 moves long. But you learn them as we learn them. So let's say you and I are wrestling, or you're Screech, right? And we're wrestling, and you pin me, as humiliating as it is to be pinned by Screech, theoretically, since you know exactly how he was supposed to pin me, if he screwed it up a little bit, but I got pinned perfectly like Hulk Hogan told me I should, then I win. It's all choreographed. You know the outcome of every single fight. You know, you know who's going to win. You just don't know who's going to be eliminated. You're eliminated not for losing or winning a wrestling match. You're eliminated for losing or winning correctly. It's like dancing with the stars aggressively. That's what I call it. Oh, but it had, it showed, uh, both of you guys being held back in like a Oh, no, I, 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 I said, uh, a side made some save by the bell, uh, remark and he smacked me. And if you remember the last guy to smack me, his name was, what was that guy? His name Bob Lavi. 
Uh-huh. And some guy smacked me in, uh, from another radio show. 215 pounds of stupid f- bastard against 165 pounds of me. And I knocked him out twice. 52 seconds of the first and 10 seconds of the second. And in 10 seconds of the second, he didn't move again. They took him out in a stretcher. So that's the way I like to play. This wrestling thing, even though I knew the way it was supposed to come out, even being touched by Screech is a little upsetting to me. I, I look I look forward in you uh, putting the beat down on that idiot. Well, unfortunately, you don't really get to the guy. I, and uh, thank you very much for calling. The guy I really joined the show to do was to actually physically fight Rodman. I had a shirt made up and everything because in the contract, there's this big thing that basically came out to accidents happen. And when I was going to get to fight Rodman, I'm not saying if I did or I didn't because I signed a confidentiality agreement. I did have a special outfit that uh, said across the shirt, accidents. Because it said accidents happen, and I just want to know this is coming. Because I told him when he challenged me to a fight, he called my show because I was dogging him, saying I wouldn't have sex with Carmen Electra because she'd had sex with, uh, um, what's his face? Uh, Dennis Rodman. Said I would just, there's no way I would ever sleep with anybody that ever slept with Dennis Rodman. Why don't you just, just shoot yourself full of diseases right now? And boring conversation to learn to mumble. There's a good time. And so he called up. And kind of challenged me to a fight. And I said, I'll kick your ass right now. I gave him my exact address. And he said, I don't have time. I said, it'll take me like 30 seconds. My boss comes running in like you're shaking my head going, don't you know who that is? He's 6'10". And three, blah, blah. And I said, I don't know a lot about sports. But let me say this. I bet your knees suck, Rodman. And there was silence. And I went, I got him. And I said, I'm 5'6". You're going to be punching straight down on the top of my skull, which is going to hurt you more than it hurts me, bro. And I'm going right for your knees. And by the time you get down to my level, I'll have one of those knees twisted around your back ankle. Bitch. And then he hung up. The next thing I know, I'm stuck at a wrestling show with the bastard, and I'm not getting to carve him to pieces like I would have liked. Thank you very much for your call. By the way, I get a little emotional. If you're not used to listening to my show, sometimes we'll get a little carried away. Hey, Mike, what's up? Hey, bro. How's it going? Pretty good, and you? I'm uh, hanging in, buddy. Hey, man, big fan of you and big fan of Tom's, brother. That, well, <laughs> sometimes I'm not that big a fan of me, but I love Lycus. What can I do for you? Hey, man, that's all right. We all go through the bad, but we all get the good, too. That's fair enough. Yeah, I'm having a nice little resurgence here. So what can I do for you? Oh, man, I got one thing to say to you, brother. Man, you are just way too popular. You need to dump that bitch. See, you're you're absolutely wrong. You're absolutely <laughs> wrong. Do you know, here's, here's what you're not thinking about. First of all, let's assume, and this is safe to assume, that if you recognize me from TV when I walk into the bar, because if, if you don't, this chick, this six-foot-tall blonde, is not hitting on the five-foot-six redhead. It ain't going to happen, all right? I'm not getting the hot chicks if I'm not famous. To most people, you to, it's, yes, but with a target on your back the size of Wyoming, these bitches think I'm incredibly rich, which I am not. I no, am not. not. I just dude. went through a divorce. Well, dig this, man. Hang on. So you leave the bar with some chick, right? And the next thing you know, you're getting a letter from your lawyer that says she doesn't even remember going to your house. Uh, she doesn't remember uh, doing anything. Certainly, she does not remember uh, uh, consenting to sex. And the next thing you know, she wants $500,000. And that's just not to go to the press. That's just blackmail money. So what? it is not that easy to just go out and pick up chicks every single night of the week unless you want to spend a good point portion of your time paying off chicks, especially in Hollywood, whose specific job it is to blackmail you. Hey, you sound like you got a little bit of experience. I do. I have a lot of experience. Unfortunately, in any settlement I may or may not have, I cannot discuss it. But I can tell you this one cost me $80,000. And if I, that was the lesson I learned. Now, if some chick just wanted five Gs, I just give it to her. Uh, but I take real, real, you know, you call it, talk about, uh, safe sex. Some people consider that wearing a camera. I call it having a hidden camera, uh, a hidden camera in your living room. And it well, just says my house. Do, man, there ain't nothing like covering your ass. I want the, you to know, man. Love you, love Tom. Thanks, man. Thank I you. appreciate it. But I want you to know that's a true story. I have a sign on my front door that says this house is under constant sur- uh, video surveillance and underneath in just as big writing, but everybody has seen those security signs, so they stop reading. It says inside and out. Aside from the bathrooms, if I flip a switch, you are on tape in my house. So when that lawyer calls me up and says, my client says she did not consent, I go, really? Then why is she yelling yippee-i-o-ki-a and wearing a propeller hat on her friggin' head saying, thanks, Danny, this is the best night I ever had. And then the lawyer shuts up. 
And it's very hard to make a lawyer shut up. Took me, I was going to tell you this, it cost me 80 grand once to prove I'd never met a girl. A girl made a, an accusation. You can sue anybody. There's a, a, you can sue anybody for anything. Girl made an accusation. Uh, by it, just pure coincidence, not only was I never in the states she said I was in during the time she said I was molesting her, I happened to have been on a comedy stage in front of hundreds of witnesses. And this was over a period of months. It just kind of worked out that way because I don't do that much comedy. But that still cost me 80 Gs. So then the judge awards me $100,000 in damages. From a nutcase bitch who doesn't have a penny or an address, it was just 80 grand of my money. So now, when you talk about d dump your girlfriend, I've made it clear I want sex every single day. Sex can also be, in a hundred different ways, dangerous. You know, a condom won't do it. A condom in a video camera will help. But then there, are, there can be legal ramifications with that. So if you want sex every day, and I do, a girlfriend is not a bad idea. And if you have almost no moral fiber at all, which I do not, then having a wife or a girlfriend makes no difference at all. Not one has ever slowed me down a bit. You know, I'd come home, and my wife would be sitting around, ah, a friend, a girl. <laughs> or I've had two wives. One of my wives would come home, and be, she'd be sitting around having tea with the neighbors. And I'm going, oh, man, I boned everybody at this table. I hope that's not what they're discussing. So the fact, the fact that Tom is probably just a better man than I am, that you don't need a girlfriend, he can probably hold out without sex for a couple more days than I can, or he can get sex every day, or he's not willing to lie for sex. I'm willing to chew off my own arm for the right sex. You, like If some Hayek said, if you just chop off your little toe, I'll do it uh, for a week. What do you do with your little toe that's that important? I would totally hack off a little toe to take a piece, <laughs> to replace it with a piece of Selma, to ride in that kayak. <laughs> All right, listen, uh, we got to take a break. I'm Danny Bonaduce. I am, uh, I'm, I was going to say uh, filling the chair off or filling the shoes off, but I'm not even going to make a remark like that. All I'm doing is trying to back up my body, my buddy uh, Tom Likas by showing him I'll do four hours extra work because you're my pal and you went to bat for me. So I'm here for you, buddy. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's 1-800-5800-TOM. Like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. Hey, boys and girls, Danny Bonanichi here for uh, Tom Likas, who is not with us today. Will be with us again tomorrow, so don't you worry. 1-800-5800-TOM, uh, taking your phone calls as they come in. Um, when you get bored with just uh, random calls, I have also, there's all sorts of interesting news. Like, can you believe uh, Jose Canseco? Busted again at the border. If we bring it back, I think it's uh, HGC. Uh, what it does is it... Uh, it gets you your own um, testosterone going again because when you inject enough of it, uh, your body starts stops making its own. And when you cycle off uh, steroids, you have no sex drive. And if you don't medicate yourself correctly, you'll start to grow what are called, uh, well, I'll just call them breasts. Uh, and interestingly enough, because I did it the wrong way when I was illegally using them years ago, uh, I got, it's funny, I think testosterone is men's drive for everything, because at first I just lost interest in sex, which was bizarre, but I was married at the time to a woman who doesn't much like sex, and our marriage actually kind of got better. But then I started, uh, I thought growing boobs, I could feel these balls of fat at the end, and uh, I also then I started to lose interest in like my favorite TV shows and boxing matches and it was like everything of going outside and jogging, working out, anything. I just lost interest. I just I don't know if that's you know women have brains and men have uh, testes and we think with them because you know you know that expression men think with both heads. I don't think we do. I think sometimes we're singular and it's downstairs. I think that's the, you know I make terrible 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 decisions because I'm thinking down there very often. Uh, uh, but uh, anyway, so so we can talk about that again. If you were Jose Canseco, I mean, would you ever think, I got an idea, I'll cross an international uh, border with roids. And when they say, can I see your identification? It says in big, bold letters, Jose Canseco on it. Why doesn't it just say drug addict? My name's, I've legally changed my mind to drug addict. Uh... T Tijuana smuggler. 
You know that song uh, uh, that Jimmy Buffett did, something about the, uh, uh, being a smuggler? Uh, that kept him out of Jamaica for three years. Just a song, okay? Being actually Jose Canseco, and I'm not big. I'm five foot six, but you know I work out a lot, and I'm in okay shape. Just because I have done it before, and I don't want to be hassled, I wear the bulkiest clothes I can wear at the border. So you can't see I even work out because I don't want them to think, "Hey, you went to the pet pharmacy," which is, by the way, the way to go. They just opened up a new one on the avenue of the Revolution in Tijuana. If you care, it's uh, when you go in straight from the border, go in, you'll go up the main street, avenue of the Revolution. Go, it's on a corner across the street from a giant, giant drugstore. There's a pet pharmacy. Not that I recommend that you do anything like that, but that's where they are. Okay, just thought we'd take that little moment together. Let's go uh, with Portland again. Portland's calling in a lot. That's cool. Uh, hello, uh, Diane. Hey, Danny. How are you doing uh, today? I'm extraordinarily well, thank you. Hey, glad to hear it, but I wanted to ask you a question. Hey, yeah. I bought uh, some tickets to see you in June at the Baghdad Theater, and uh, the show got canceled. What happened with that? Uh, I ended up, I probably shouldn't say too much because of this cause, but, you know, in some of the commercials, they show some of the ambulances. This wrestling show with Hulk Hogan, I've had 12 fights. I'm 12-0 and 0 with 10 knockouts, and I've never been hurt. I got hurt every day at that wrestling friggin' show. Every friggin' day hurt one way or another. And I'm just saying there's a chance that in that commercial where you see ambulances pulling away more than once, one of them might have me in it. Do you think you'll be up this way uh, anytime soon? I would uh, love to be. As a matter of fact, I would rebook that club in a minute. But the fact of the matter is, I, here, I just won't say where I was injured. I was injured and in the hospital when I was supposed to be there, so I couldn't come. Okay. All right. Well, I forgive you. Well, thank you. If I, all right. if I, that's all I have to do would have a girl forgive me is break a bone. That'd just be so... What a time saver. I can't believe you didn't take out the garbage and you slept with our next door neighbor. Just take out a hammer and go BAM on your little finger. And then she has to go, okay, done. Pay me then. Oh, cool. I mean, I'd be in a cast all the time. I'm in a constant... Because I live the, my life almost exactly the way I say I do, uh, because I'm a substandard human being, that's read a lot of books, but that has not helped my moral fiber in any way. Um, because I am, I am substandard, I'm in a constant state of I'm sorry to someone. I owe somebody an apology constantly, but only if I get caught. Now, uh, and I've said this before, if it's true that you learn from your mistakes, mathematically speaking, I am now the smartest person in the world. Okay, let's cruise. Uh, let's get, keep taking these phones. I don't know what this one's about, but he's on, been on hold the longest. Don. Hello, Danny. What's happening, bro? Oh, man, I'm kicking back in return in my car, reading a book, and they say it's time for time. I throw the book down, say, okay, pops on, and damn if it ain't my brother. <laughs> well, thank you. For, uh, you know what? I take that as a huge compliment. Thank you. Dude, you know what? Big, big shoes, but that just shows you got big, big brass, brother. You know what it is? It's actually... Um, it's neither. It's you know what I am. You know where I show real loyalty is to a real friend and a real guy. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I don't know if you know Frosty, Hottie, and Frank. Yeah, I do. Okay, when they gave me the last hour of their show, which was a replay, that's what I do. My two to three shift is really the last hour of their show that what used to be a replay. Right. And Frank offered to come back from vacation to introduce me to show that I wasn't stealing an hour of their show. That he came right. on, and I never, ever, ever will forget that. And I think I've paid him back in a couple of kindnesses, but I've never had, you know, the the uh, wherewithal to actually, you know, cover him to like really have a guy's back. And I just thought that was so cool, and I never forget that stuff. And I don't know if that because I said I'm a substandard human being. I don't know if that's one of my best attributes. Or one of my worst, because if somebody effed with one of my buddies too hard, I could very easily be pushed. Because you have to beat whatever they did to your boy, you have to top it. And if somebody got hurt real bad and somebody cared about my boy, I'd, I'd have to wreck them. Or, Amen, brother. Amen. You come from the same cloth I am. Daddy. Luckily, the yeah, cool, I, I the cool thing is, I even have enough dough to have people that are much larger than I hurt. <laughs> and I don't even have to be at the scene of the crime. I can be videotaped standing somewhere else naked going, I didn't do it. Feelings aren't real and pain, pain passes, man. Don't trip. <laughs> You're talking to the right guy. 
<laughs> All hey, right, man, man. I wanted to tell you, man, it's it's not a, it's not a, it's not about the destination, brother. The destination is a hole in the ground. It's about the journey, man. You know what? I am a licensed skipper for sailing boats up to fifty tons, and that is the total truth. You know, everybody goes, "Why would you go anywhere at four miles an hour?" And it's because the second you get on the boat and raise the sails, you are at your destination. You're traveling somewhere else at four miles an hour. But the destination is the sail, the power, the control of the wind, making the boat go where you want it to go, no matter what the wind says. I can make a boat go any direction, no matter what uh, direction the wind is coming from. I can make it go dead upwind. Now, you can't physically make it go dead upwind, but I can travel dead upwind by jibing back and forth. That is that is the journey. You're absolutely right. I agree with you 100%. Let's go with this uh, Ashley. Hi, Ashley. Hi, Dan. How are you? I'm extraordinarily well, thank you. Very good. Okay, my first question. So, do you always practice safe sex? Uh, always, always. Always, always. No, probably not. You mean when I wait, 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 wait? You mean when I'm cheating on somebody? Yeah. Uh, no, because I usually, to be honest with you, uh, even in my drunkest stages, I never planned. I loved my wife and a couple of my girlfriends with all my heart and soul. Just not with my entire unit. My entire unit was still kind of a free unit. I think she owned my heart, my spleen, and one lung, but my unit still belonged to me, and I could often not control it. But I never, ever left my room, if I had to do with a show in Vegas or something, with a condom. That would be planning to cheat. The next thing I know, I'm having a couple of drinks, I'm in Vegas, some hot showgirl hits on me, so I would not go all the way, if you know what I mean. So... It's often I would not have sex at all. I would just have the next best thing. But I never prepared to cheat. You know, I never wanted to cheat. Just sometimes, you know, you got a Vegas showgirl that's standing there wearing, you know, something that looks a lot like the Taj Mahal on her head and tassels on her boobs and she starts hitting on you. Are you really supposed to say no? I think your right to vote should be taken away if you can say no to a showgirl just wearing tassels. I don't. I think your man card needs to be pulled. So for the most part... And I was a blackout drunk for a while, so I can't say yes for sure. Uh, but for the most part, yes, I always practice safe sex because I don't see how cheating on a girl, unless you get caught, really affects her life in any way, shape, or form as long as you treat her very well. I think bringing home an STD is just a little rude. That's what I'm saying. Aren't you afraid? Wouldn't you feel guilty if you did get, bring home an STD? Yes, I would. I would feel incre incredibly guilty. But I would also, you know, uh, I would be taking such a beating that I would imagine five minutes after my guilt set in, my anger and self-defense, because imagine how mad a girl gets that you've betrothed your heart to, that you come home and you give her something that you didn't pick up at home, and I must have got it at the gym sharing towels. That excuse just doesn't fly anymore. Women went and educated themselves. I hate that. So let me ask you another question. Is it okay if your girlfriend or your wife that you care about cheats on you? Would you be understanding about that? This is just an expression because I did get in trouble once for making this comment. And it was They said it was a terrorist threat. Not against any of my girlfriends or anything, just somebody that made me mad on the radio. So this is just an expression. If my wife or girlfriend ever cheated with, on me, I would shoot everybody in the head. Oh, really? That's funny, but it's okay if you... What do you mean? What if a really hot guy in a nice Speedo with an eight-pack, just like really uh, hot... If my girlfriend ever cheats on me with a guy who wears a Speedo, she could keep him. <laughs> you, don't, but you don't deserve me. If you cheat on me with a guy who wears a Speedo, dude, why you date one of the village people? Cheat on <laughs> me with the cop. Oh. <laughs> it's, are, you, are you asking me if I have a double standard? Yes, totally and completely. I cheat whenever I want, and I try and get away with it. If you cheat on me and I catch you, everybody bleeds. Are you clear now? Could I answer more honestly and straightforward? I cheat and think I'm going to get away with it, and nobody's going to get hurt. If you're che My girlfriend could be cheating on me right now. She knows who I am. She's listening to my voice. She could, she could be boning the plumber right now. You know, I think one of the sinks was stopped up when I left. I don't know what she's doing right now. Don't get caught. Nothing's going to happen. If I catch you, everybody's screwed in a big, big way. So, yes, I have a total double standard. I can cheat. She can't. 
But, Dan, if I were your girlfriend and I was listening to this show and I heard the way you were talking, Dan, I would be sure to be screwing, call someone and screw someone right then and there. If I were her, that's exactly what I'd be doing. What, is she some kind of idiot? I, you know, I would, for, if I were anybody out there, I'd call 1-800-5800-TOM. Unless I was my girlfriend, Amy. Then I'd just call some guy named Tom, Dick, or Harry, and I'd just go do it. Okay, because I'd say, I'm listening to my boyfriend on the air right now saying he's a scumbag who'd cheat on me and then shoot me in the head if I did it to him. He sucks, what a loser, and she'd be right. Tom Likens. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likens Show. <laughs> Why I don't sound like Tom Wagons? It's because I'm not. I would aspire to be, but I most certainly am not. I'm Danny Bonadici filling in for my buddy, Tom Wagons, who couldn't be with us today, but we'll be back again tomorrow. Our phone number is 1-800-5800-TOM. Feel free to give us a call. Uh, I'm just going to run down these phone calls uh, until you guys want to talk about something specific. Because, you know, I went to all the trouble to read the newspaper and stuff. I told you about Conseco. But if you just want to rap, here I am. Let's see. Uh, let's go to this line here. Michael. Yeah? Hey, you're listening to a whole other country. What's happening up in Canada? No, it's Washington. Vancouver, Washington? Yeah. Oh, excuse me. It's there, okay. there is a Vancouver, Canada, though, right? There is? Yeah! No way. Did you know there's a Paris, Texas? No. Uh, this call is going to get more fascinating by the second. What can I do for you, Michael? Well, how do I break up with my girlfriend, but not too mean that all of her friends don't like me no more? First of all, how old are you? 13. You don't care? Kind of. No, you really don't care. You, just, you tell you you don't want to break up with her anymore. You, uh, you tell her, uh, let's see, uh, do you do sports? <clears throat> do you play sports? Sometimes. Sometimes. Uh, are you on any teams? Are you on the debate club? Are you on the chess club? Are you on any academic thing that you have to do for no. school? No. Okay, because what you can do is very easily tell her, and this is, uh, uh, you really have to be, and I got to tell you, your verbal skills could really use some enhancing uh, to get away with this, but what you have to do is tell her that you are so preoccupied with thoughts of her that you are completely failing out of school and that your your parents are mad at you, you're constantly in trouble, and that all you can do is think about her. You're, you're not eating, you're not doing your homework, uh, people think you're sick. So what you do is you do the standard thing, but 13-year-olds are still gullible enough to fall for this, I would imagine, and you just tell her that you love her so much that the rest of your life is falling apart from lack of paying attention to it. That you, you say, think of life... How gay is this? Think of life as a garden, okay? You're so in love with your girl, you have not remembered to water the flowers in weeks. All, all of your flowers are dead. Your flowers are your parents, your schoolwork, your friends, your bike, your paper route, whatever the hell you've got. You're losing everything. She's a drug. She's crack cocaine. And she's ruining your life because you're all, she's all you ever think about. And you've got to break it off to survive because you love her so much that you can't think of anything else. And not thinking of anything else is alienating you from your friends, your schoolwork, your teammates. You got that? Got it. Let me hear it. Uh, hear what? Let me hear how you're going to break up with her. I've been so preoccupied with you that I can't think about anything else. My friends are, like, going away. Um, my mom's yelling at me all the time. Make sure to add that your grades are slipping. My, I'm getting Fs in all my class. Yeah, you know, all your future plans of getting into a good college and making a, you know, at 13, I don't know if you're talking about being a good husband, but, you know, all my plans of going and getting into an Ivy League college are going down the drain because I can't think of anything but you. And just use the word love a lot. You're breaking up with her, as bizarre as this sounds. She'll go for it. You're breaking up with her because you love her so much that you can't think of anything else, so all your other responsibilities are dying. Got it? Got it. Okay. Glad I could be here for you, man. <laughs> I can't believe that uh, I love you too much. It's not you. It's not me. I mean, it's uh, not you. It's me. It's still going to work. But at 13, it should work. Dave, what's happening? 
Hey, what's up, Big Dan? This is Dave, the fellow uh, street warrior. We survived it, and I had to call you because last week was... Todd Bridges, uh, you were hitting so many subjects that related. I just I tried to get a hold of you, but your you know show was so short. And you know I'm 17 years sober myself. I was on the streets homeless, like you. Um, you know I was singing in rock bands through the 80s and 90s, and you know I got lucky. I buried a lot of friends, and then I got into stunts in the movies, and so the wrestling aspect. Uh, about getting injured all the time was uh, hilarious because people don't realize we used to teach stunts and all these big, hot, sexy six tooth I want to be a stuntman guys would leave one practice just from doing fake stunt fighting. Oh, I'll tell you right now, in one of the commercials, if you go to HulkHogan.com, uh, I don't know if he actually, because there's a cut, and I wasn't there for that particular fight, but uh, Rodman goes off a rope, and I know that they call for a medic. Then there's a cut, and an ambulance goes away. I don't know if Rodman's actually in it, or if it's one of us, one of the other ones of us in it, but several people are taken off that show from uh, serious injuries, broken bones and the like, uh, and, and including, I don't know if he went in the ambulance or not, because I wasn't there, but I watched on the commercial at HulkHogan.com uh, that he hits one of the professional wrestlers really hard who gets really mad at him. Rodman had, Rodman had such an issue with hurting people. I was surprised Butterbean didn't just kill him at some point. But uh, they definitely called for the medic, and he may have gone away in an ambulance, so I don't know. Uh, let's go to... Uh, let's see. Uh, I'll tell you what. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back on time exactly if I do this right about now. Uh, am I still looking at that clock right? Or has it changed? It's perfect. Okay. My name's Danny Bonarici. I'm in for uh, Tom Langus today and today only. The man will be back. Uh, call 1-800-5800-TOM. The Tom Likas Show.